Hello, back again. This time I'm doing some sort of a tutorial on Ableton Live Lite, which came with the controller. Uh, it'll be kind of both a review or an opinion on the software and specifically how to launch clips with the pads, using the pads to launch clips in Ableton Live. So, the I guess real quick I'll do a basic review you know, I'm not an Ableton user, but I've gone through the software and learned all the basics to get a feel for it. And I have to say, I do actually like it, even though I'm pretty loyal to FL Studio. I like certain aspects of Ableton Live. It's definitely more suited to live music. Uh, the reason being that you can first build tracks in this view, which is like a standard horizontal view, and then switch to the vertical view, which has oops, it has all your horizontal stuff lined vertically and then over here there's something that's basically your master tracks but it's uh, parts of the song and they call them scenes in this software so each scene can be built up of all your sounds and clips and editing and automation and all that and can be parts of a song well you can link either these individual clips or you can link whole scenes to your pads which basically means you can have all the parts that build your song linked to individual pads and play the whole song on the pads it's very good for like a jam session where you want all these parts and you want to just throw them together on the fly and in different patterns in this case I'm using some clips that are pre-built into Ableton Live Lite so, I'm going to use those as examples, but uh, obviously your own clips that you build would be what you would use. But uh, we'll go ahead and get into it. I guess as far as reviewing the software as a whole, it's definitely good if you don't already have software that you enjoy and are really familiar with, then you can go with Ableton Live Lite, or Ableton Live, I mean, and probably be pretty good. To go. I mean, it's got all the same things other DAWs have, but uh, I kind of like the workflow and a lot of the times, like when you're working on a part, like an instrument or a clip, all the stuff you need will be down here below it, uh, like all the controls. So it's it's nice and organized where you can kind of work with everything all at once. I personally will still stick with FL Studio just because I'm more familiar with it, but Ableton Live is actually pretty cool especially if you want to do live work like you're a DJ and you want to play clips live and build a song live just for entertainment at a party or something it would be pretty good for that once you get it all set up so I have no complaints about it it's not a bad software at all it's probably the best other than the VST sense it's the best thing they put in the freebies that came with the MPK controller uh, I honestly did not like NPC Essentials very much, so between this and NPC Essentials, I would say use this. So back to the tutorial, I'm basically going, I've already linked the clips and everything, but we're going to assume that you don't have your controller set up yet. So before you even started Ableton, you should have Ableton off or closed, and your controller should be off you turn the controller on to get ready then you open Ableton. It's really important that you don't have Ableton open first because it won't recognize the controller. So you turn the controller on, then you open Ableton then you go to options down to preferences when the window opens you should automatically already have MPK 261 or whatever your controller is listed in the input and output here. If you don't, then something went wrong. Because when I initially started, it wasn't showing up and I was trying to find it through here because you can find things in these menus. But uh, it has to automatically show up here, really. I mean, for it to work right off the bat, you're gonna wanna see it here, so you might try. If you don't see it, you might try restarting and turning it on, off and then back on and then opening Ableton again. The other thing you have to worry about is make sure that remote is on for the input. 
you don't necessarily have to worry about output but uh you're gonna want that on especially for the first of the input really all it may as well have them all on because you might need them but uh if that's not on you won't be able to use the pads to launch clips so it's really important that remote is turned on so once you have that done you close it and you're pretty much good to go you should have once you build some clips in uh, well in this mode is how you would want to go in over here go to the vertical mode and let's say you're just goofing off and you want to test this out you would go to the browser side click clips find one you like and then drag it over here to these vertical bars and you can label them however you want I just sort of temporarily labeled them so basically each line goes over to the master scene for it and these are numbered unless you rename them so for organization you would want to rename them better like intro chorus end of song that kind of thing but in this case I just this is just a test so I didn't but it's gonna play the first one's just gonna play the dirty Neptune clip then the next one's gonna play these three and then the last one plays two and uh, I'll show you how to link them first because that's obviously the most important part so you just click MIDI over here on the top right toolbar or you can go into options edit MIDI map or hit control M so any of those three options works but uh, if you don't remember to hit control M you can just go over here click MIDI and when you do you're gonna change to this mode where everything's highlighted in blue that basically means anything in blue can be automated or linked to your uh, controller so in this case I've linked these three scenes to three of the pads on my controller. Now I'm going to delete those so that you can see how to set them up. So all you do, you click whatever you want to link. If you just wanted to link a clip, you could just click the clip. Now in this case we're linking the whole scene of clips. So you click one, then you hit the pad you want to link. In this case I'm using the far left pad hit it. Now when I hit it, it added that little MIDI note information. It's also got the CC like control channel. That popped up there telling you that it's linked. And also over here in the browser there's a MIDI mapping uh, basically a browser that tells you all the things you have linked. And since I only have one right now, it's only showing that one. But uh, once you have everything linked you'll see tons of things over here. But I will go ahead and link the next two. Hit two, and watch when I, I'm fixing to hit the pad. All right, now we're gonna link three. Make sure I did it right. There we go. So now all three are linked, and once you finish that, you go up here, click MIDI, and you're back to where you were, and you can go ahead and test it out now. Now in my case, I also have a synth track separate from these so I can play a synth over the clips I play. So here's the synth. You can just, it's just sort of like a melodic arpeggiated thing. So that I can play on the keys while I'm playing clips with the pads. So you can see how this would be really good for a live kind of setting. So I'll go over here and you can see me hit the pads this will be the first clip. So at any time I can switch over to another clip by just hitting the next pad and it will switch when that track is done. And then I can hit the third pad and switch again. And you can play keys while you have that playing.
So, anyways, that's basically it. Once you have clips linked to your pads, you can play pretty much like parts of a song however you want. It doesn't. There's no order to it. You can play the end, the beginning, the middle, all in different orders. You could have 16 different parts if you wanted and play like some kind of massive mashup of clips like say you are a DJ and you want to mix three or four different songs together and actually have parts of them be able to be played live to blend them together one after the other you could do that and you could interchange parts maybe even go back to previous parts I mean it's all up to how you build those clips but uh... it's actually pretty versatile and it's it definitely makes Ableton Live the best software for live playing I like I said I'm gonna stick with FL Studio for just making music in general but live definitely is built exactly for what's in the name which is live music so uh, it's gonna be something interesting to check out and I can see why it's so popular now but uh, that's basically all there is to setting up clips this was only, I mean, if you think about it, this is only three scenes with some really minor clips that were pre built that I threw in, and then a synth line that I'm playing separate. And you can already hear, like, the beginnings of a song just from that. I mean, I could freeform some kind of song out of just these basic parts. So it, it's definitely powerful if you're wanting to just throw songs together, build them quick and then you can go back and edit them and refine them but uh... anyway overall i gotta say i actually like ableton and i'm glad they threw it in with the controller and hopefully that clip launching information helps some people because i've seen a lot of questions about it on uh... some of my other reviews and other people's videos so the answer is yes you can launch clips with the mpk pads you just gotta set it up properly, but it doesn't really take that long, and it is quite powerful. So, thanks for watching again, and I'll be putting more reviews up for different things, whatever gear I get next. <laughs> Talk to you later.